All right, start day 214. Yeah, as I uh, leave my uh, campsite, campsite and I got 10 miles to go to Middlegate, which will be fun. Straighten out my beard. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there should be water at the end of that uh, canyon over there because it meets up with another uh, tributary. And that should be reliable water. If it isn't, then I, uh, well, then I got eight more so miles to Middlegate, which I'll still be able to make it just on uh, conservation uh, water rations, but which will be fun. But I don't think it's going to be necessary. Uh, but until then, I gotta get moving. It's pretty cold out right now. It's gotta be below 40 degrees. And uh, yeah, so um, I want to get this desert done with so it's not as cold. <sighs> Funny, it's like two weeks ago I was worried about it being too hot. Now it's going to be too cold. That's the desert for you, though. There's really no in between. So yeah. Uh, at least for a very uh, small amount of time. But yeah, uh, I get moving. It's around 6.50 right now. That's okay. Sun's not even up, but it's still kind of late for me. But that's okay because I only got 10 miles to go. So see you guys on the way. All right, later. All right, so there is water, at least down there. But I think I have enough to get to Millgate. And I don't want to deal with all the cows around here. Oh. All the water affected by the cows and their uh, crap, <laughs> literally. So yeah, still got about a little bit over a liter left, and that should be more than enough to do the. Well, it's around nine miles now to Millgate, so yeah, even a little bit less. So yeah, I think I'll just walk straight there. Take less time as well. So yeah. That's the plan. Be in total, it'll be a good whew, 42 mile water carry that I did. So, yeah. I did it decently comfortably, too. Not even full, completely full in water. So, yeah. As this car goes by. So, I think if I had to. Especially in this type of cold weather, well, coldish weather, I can go 50 miles with the water I can carry. So, yeah. It's nice to know the limits, the, the upper limits of what I can do, water-wise. Yeah, if it was like 20 or 30 degrees warmer, I'd probably be in a lot more trouble. Just because, uh, of the, the water you lose from sweating and all that stuff and extra exertion. But this is fine as I drop the glove. Yeah. <sighs> so I had to take it off to take, make this video because it's still freaking cold. Yeah. All right. Before my hand freezes, I'll end the video. All right, later. So. Some mountain goats up there. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. The only reason why I saw them is because I saw some rocks falling down. So, yeah. Let's see. It's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can see them or not. They might have gone over the ridge. But uh, I am now at Eastgate. I think seven or eight miles from Middlegate, <laughs> which kind of makes sense since I'm east of there now. Uh, this is where I, I guess I could knock on a door for water if I really needed it, but I'm fine. Yeah. Causing uh, many avalanches, those goats. Yeah. It's pretty cool. First time I've seen mountain goats, I know I've had a few off, a uh, few chances. So glad I saw those guys before the end of the hike. Yeah. 
as I uh, try to get this day on, day done as quickly as possible. It's As I walk through the few houses of Eastgate, <laughs> I think it's just just one ranch. So yeah. All right, later. All right. So I'm in the next desolate valley. Not that desolate. There's a few roads, active roads actually, and I'm about six miles from uh, Middlegate Station. So yeah. it's only like 9:40, so I should get there before noon, hopefully. That'd be a good time. Yeah. Before it warms up any, anyways. Yeah, I'm hiking light right now, like <laughs> a little bit less than a liter of water left, and like a cliff bar and some uh, beef jerky left. That's about it. <laughs> could be a big difference once I leave Middlegate but yeah and I'll probably stop uh, I will stop at Middlegate um, for a couple reasons first of all they were good enough to hold like three Amazon packages for me and my uh, food package so I want to patronize them for that second reason second reason is I'm lazy on a bed <laughs> especially since I had to suffer the defunct pad the last three nights as well so yeah I'm gonna get some actual good sleep in uh, third reason is I think uh, there's a big stretch of uh, no water I think it's around, there's like one source over the next 57 miles or something like that, so. I want to start that as early as possible tomorrow, just so maybe I can get through that stretch on only one night. So yeah, I'll limit how much water I need to ration out for that. Because uh, the, the way I did this last stretch wasn't ideal. I, I camped like four miles after I got my water for this stretch and then didn't finish before I got to the next water source. So I had two nights out, I had to carry two nights of food, uh, water. So. which isn't as efficient, efficient as possible uh, across a waterless stretch. It's, it's better to get a full day than at least one night than another full day to get to the next water source. So yeah. That's how you stretch out water. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'll be doing for this next stretch. Though. As uh, and that represents like pretty much the last of the desert. So it's about from Middlegate. It's about 90, 90 miles or so to uh, Virginia City. And good news is that mo that's mostly flat, or very small hills until the end. Yeah, and there's a few towns after the 57 miles between me and Virginia City. I think it's like Fallon or something like that. So I'm get something to eat there. So that'd be nice. Yeah, I was like, try to get this uh, very short day done as quickly as possible. All right, later. So every once in a while when you're, when you're hiking like this, you come upon trail magic. Uh, yeah, so apparently there's a Silver State 508, which is a basically a big bike race they have every year. 
and I just happen to be walking by when they're doing it. So one of the, the rest stops that they have. Yeah, it's hung out there for like an hour. Uh, the guy served me, uh, cooked me up a, a burger, chips, candy, all that stuff. So like, yeah, one of the better trail magics I've had. And since I didn't really have anywhere fast to go today, I hung out there for a while. So that was nice. Of course, I forget the guy's name, but yeah. But uh, yeah, he's he's just out here for support for the height for the bikers. So, yeah. And uh, apparently, he's a Pacific Trail, Pacific Coast Trail hiker, so through hiker, so he knows all about it. So that was nice. Nice early break. Now, now I just think I'd, uh, it's around 11.50. So probably got another hour to Middle Gate Station. And all I have to do is follow this road, not the main road. It goes right to it. And I'll be done for the day. Uh, nice relaxing day overall yeah it's good that it cuts down because I was planning on eating like twice today at Millgate like when I got there and then in the in the evening I don't have to do that as a uh, Get this day, vacation day, off, done. All right, later. Okay, so off in the distance, there's Middlegate Station. And uh, the actual trail itself is the 50. But I'm on this road because it goes right to the station because uh, it's about a quarter mile off the road and this goes right to it. So makes more sense to me. But if, uh, yeah, if I was just not going to stop at Millgate, I would be on the 50. Yeah. Only got about a mile and a half left to it. So. Almost done for the day. Then uh, go there, pick up my packages, sort through the food. Hopefully that's there. My shoes and my new socks. Is, uh, one of the pairs of socks I've had for a couple thousand miles and it's starting to get holes in it, so yeah. Replace that. New underwear, because uh, same thing. And a new pad, which hopefully works. <laughs> so I can get actually good sleep each night. Because yeah, I guess for the last week and a half, it's been about that long. Maybe even more. Yeah, I've been only getting be able to get a couple hours of sleep at a time before my pad deflates. Yeah, it's no fun at all. And uh, it's starting to get cold. I have enough uh, winter gear where I can um, mitigate that. But yeah, part of the uh, reason you have an air pad like that is so you can get a a cushion of air between you and the the cold ground. So, yeah. And uh, as I was looking back at it, uh, I figure it's been in the, the 20s at night for the last few, oh, at least three nights ago when I was up on the mountain. This is that cold. So yeah. It's more cold than that having a defunct pad actually becomes dangerous in that yeah you're just not gonna be warm enough at night. So yeah plus I was using my uh, my part my my uh, puffy and my my uh, 
tent cover to uh, help pad it underneath. And that, those are things that gives you a little more um, a little more cushion at night uh, if you wanted to not be as cold. So yeah, this is necessary. Plus, I need to do the laundry, take a shower, eat some more. Even though I'm not hungry right now, and the guy fed me like a three quarter pound uh, burger. So, yeah, the trail angel. Oh, later today. So. Plenty to do, and it gives me a good excuse to be lazy. It's all the things. As I'm almost there, all right, later. All right, made it to my hotel, my motel room anyways. Uh, it's nice and small, but it only costs 40 bucks, so it could be as small as I want at one at that price. As shower, water, and it's not that hot, so yeah, there's an air conditioning right there. It's all front. Uh, my packages were here, all four of them. For some reason, Amazon felt it necessary to send three separate packages for my one order. And food. So, laundry here too. So, yeah. A nice, relaxing day. Uh, just got to do some uh, chores and I'll be ready to go to sleep and get up early tomorrow to try to tackle uh, this next waterless section as efficiently as possible. So, yeah. Only 500 miles to go. All right, later.